um, in the order we receive them. So we'll just wait a couple of minutes here for everyone to continue trickling in and then we'll go from there. Okay, we are live on Facebook and recording. So this video will be available on YouTube afterwards as well. Anna, why don't you introduce everybody in the call just as we get going? Okay, sure. Um, so tonight we have Ihor joining us today. So it's our internship program director, UCC CEO. Alex is also here. So chair of the parliamentary internship committee, UCC vice president, Roman Vashchuk, ambassador of Canada to Ukraine. And we have Larissa as our 2018, 2019 parliamentary internship alumni. Unfortunately, Volodymyr was supposed to join us, but he got caught up with work, so that's all right. Um, we have a quote from him and you can read up about that for him. So we will get started today. Um, the outline, uh, I do wanna keep this information session pretty brief. Um, just go over the nuts and bolts of the program, what to expect, how does it work, um, I'll talk about my experience through it. Larissa will have a chance to talk about hers as well. And I know we've had questions coming in about COVID. How is the world been turned upside down? So how is our internship altered because of it? And then we'll have questions as well. So um, to start off, what is the parliamentary internship program? What's it all about? How does it work? So I am from Edmonton. And I flew out to Ottawa. The parliamentary internship program does happen there. And so essentially successful candidates will be paired up with an MP and they'll be working alongside them on whatever work they're doing. Uh, that could be committee work, that could be speech writing, policy research, legislative affairs. Um, the list goes on and on. It will be tailored to you specifically depending on the MP you work for. And so for the qualifications, we are looking for candidates who are in their final year of university or college, and they're looking for a career perhaps in government work, um, in policy research, legislative, um, legislative affairs, um, if you want to look at the different committees of government and something of that interest to you, um, that will be something to look to once you get paired up with your MP. So there's public health, there's foreign affairs, different groups like that. Um, it, it's very interesting. It's very, um, very fast paced. You jump into it, which is fantastic. It's a great learning opportunity. And I do wanna stress that you don't need to come from a political science background. Um, personally, I have a science degree and I just am looking for government work in my career future. And so this is an excellent career stepping stone. Um, so if you are nervous about not having a lack of political knowledge, I would say don't shy away from applying. Uh, it is, learn on the job type of thing. And as well, the UCC provides you a lot of resources. I was able to read up um, about Canada's political sphere and learn more about that as I joined the program. So don't shy away if you're, you're nervous about that sense. Uh, we are also looking for candidates who have a background in the Ukrainian Canadian community. Um, we do wanna have um, our voice of the Ukrainian Canadian community in politics and that's one of the reasons why we have this program. Uh, so showing that you're a leader and any kind of community background that you do have would be an asset to you as a candidate. And going on to my experience, um, I was able to join pre-COVID so I was able to meet in person with my MP my MP is Peter Fonseca, and he represents the riding of Mississauga East Cooksville. Uh, he's also a former athlete. And for me, Peter is like a mentor. I, I really value that um, as one of the, the highlights of this program itself. I learned a tremendous amount from him. 
and not only in politics, but communication work and what kind of skills I should build on in my career further. Um, my experience is unusual <laughs> compared to our past alumni, just because COVID did hit, the world was turned upside down, everyone, you know, we took it day by day. Uh, we did accommodate me, <laughs> which was fantastic. I, I also really appreciate that. Um, and I was able to work on constituency work. And that's also very important. So that's listening to people in the writing about unemployment insurance. That was a huge topic. Um, the CERB and different benefits for businesses. We had a lot of clients call in about that. Um, citizenship or people who were stranded in different countries and needed flights home. So I got to look at that side of, of an MP's life as well, which is, which is a very important part. So I got to see the office in Ottawa, but I was also able to work remotely on constituency affairs. All right, so we also have Larissa here today. Um, I have a brief quote from other alumni and I'll pass over the mic to her and just so you can tell us about your experience and what you found valuable from your internship. Thanks. Um, so yeah, I applied and was the parliamentary intern in 2018 in the fall um, and I worked in the office of Michael Levitt. He's a Liberal MP uh, from uh, North York and Toronto. Um, and he at the time was on the subcommittee for human rights and then he became chair of the Foreign Affairs Committee in the House. So a lot of what I did sort of focused on his role on first the International Human Rights Committee and then on the Foreign Affairs Committee. Um, I spent about 10 months working in his Ottawa office. I did all kinds of things, um, committee things. I set up meetings, um, a lot of outreach with various different community groups that he was working with. Um, I wrote some of his speeches. I wrote some featured articles for some uh, newspapers in the rioting. Um, I did a lot of correspondence so people would either send letters or they would call me to have questions um, about certain government programs that the government was doing and you respond to them. Um, I did a bit less, I think, maybe of the constituency work when I was in Ottawa, just because this was pre-COVID. Um, but then after my internship finished, he hired me on for the campaign because it was during the election year. So I actually got the chance to go down to Toronto for a few months and work out of his, briefly out of his constituency office, which was, like Anna said, a lot of sort of people and their concerns and a lot of the questions that were coming up specifically to the writing. And then I also spent a few weeks working in the campaign office as well. Okay, Jaku Lareso. Um, so everyone's internship is a bit different. We heard from myself and Larissa, but it, it really is shaped with your MP and each MP is works on a committee. Um, like Larissa, my MP was on the Foreign Affairs Committee, and so my work was more so tailored to that. Okay, and so we also have Roman on the line with us. And Roman, you encourage a lot of donations for this internship. And I just wanna hear from you for why you think this internship is valuable for recent graduates to um, apply for it. Okay, uh, am I visible and audible? Excellent, okay. Uh, so I think you might often hear people you know, regarding any sort of issue, but let's take for an example, an, an issue that relates to either the Ukrainian community or to foreign policy as it relates to Eastern Europe or relations between Canada and Eastern Europe. People sort of go, well, why are they doing that? Why are they saying that in Ottawa? Uh, what kind of decision is that? Who possibly put them up to it? And uh, the only way you can actually uh, provide an answer to that question is by being part of the decision-making process. And so that's one of the reasons why uh, when we came back from Ukraine and uh, Ihor and his buddies at the Ukrainian Canadian Congress said, so 
you know, if, if we do a fundraiser, what should it be for? Uh, I said, well, actually, it shouldn't just be to help uh, impoverished people in Ukraine, because a lot of organizations do that. It should be to build the capacity of people of Ukrainian background in Canada to participate in policy making, political, uh, again, decision shaping uh, within the system because you're a whole lot less frustrated, still sometimes occasionally frustrated, but a whole lot less frustrated if you've seen how the sausage kitchen works and if you know that people like you can influence it and that you can also then explain to your friends how it works and how they can have a say in it. And so I think that, uh, that Larissa, Anna, uh, Ostap, and others are now way better at explaining to their coworkers, their friends, their relatives, their parents, uh, how, how it is that you need to get your views across to government so the government pays attention. The government doesn't go around purposely ignoring citizens. It just has different various mechanisms to hear from them and you need to know what they are to get that point of view across and to then bird dog it so that it turns from statements which are very nice into action and funding which is even nicer so i think that that's the main message is uh be empowered and then through the knowledge you might gain through this empower others all right really well said romana um, I'll pass it on over to Alex now. Um, as chair of the Parliamentary Internship Program, you have seen a lot of candidates and you have experience with choosing candidates. So for those listening tonight, um, what is an ideal That it has. You can lobby externally like the UCC does and interact with, uh, with political parties and with uh, the civil servants and with um, the, the various government departments from an external basis. And that's one way to interact. But if you are within the process and you have friends within any of those parties, it is really helpful if you have people who have Ukrainian issues that are on the forethought of their minds that are within the process and are speaking to people within the process as for help that we have a cadre of people that are available. So one of the issues that we're looking for is, do you have an interest in this as a career, either government relations, working in the civil service, or working within the political sphere? So that's one issue. Having a good background in Ukrainian community issues is also important because part of what you are is an internal ambassador and having a knowledge of what Ukrainian issues are, what's important to the community externally from a affairs perspective, but as COVID-19 showed this year, from an internal perspective and what resources that can to solve the politicians or the bureaucrats problem, those are important things. So if you have those kinds of backgrounds, if you have a desire, if you're a member of a political party, if you have participated in campaigns, those are important skills. Political science is all about process. The basic job of government is to make laws and implement policies. So knowing something about the policies themselves is important. So engineering, STEM, um, business, master's of business administration, law, all of those are also important things. So just because you don't have a political science background, it's actually in some ways better because it makes it easier to separate you from all of the other interns that are on the Hill that tend to be more political science oriented. So if you have a background in STEM or science or healthcare or whatever it is, 
all of those differentiate you and make you a resource to people because they don't know. I mean, a lot of MPs are small business people, they're chiropractors, the you know, park rangers, they don't necessarily have a background in it. And having a, a, a something other than a political science background is really helpful. And also, you know, a degree of articulateness that you are ready to go out of the box without a whole lot of training in terms of you know, writing style, ability to communicate in one or more official languages or maybe all three official languages including ukrainian is helpful so because all of those things are more things in your toolbox that are helpful so those are the sort of things we're looking for okay i hope everyone took note um, of those candidates looking to apply um, and slide with roman who who is known to encourage donations for this um, internship, especially with the tribute dinner. I do want to thank all our donors who make this program possible. So we do get a lot of donations from Shevchenko Foundation, Canada Veteran Fund, Ukrainian National Federation, Ukrainian Credit Union, and that really makes this possible for recent graduates to have this opportunity to learn about government work. Okay, so we'll pass this on over to Ihor, who will talk about how this internship is really shaped by COVID and how it may look like in the fall. Okay, uh, and as a former intern at the Parliament of Manitoba, <laughs> I, I can say uh, that, uh, you know, that the, the, the experience you get here is the experience that will shape your future career and your your professional career, I think really, you know, sort of postgraduate. So um, excited to see that there's so many people watching on Facebook and, and here. And again, Jacqui Anna for thanking the donors. We have small donors, we have large donors, we have organizations, we have individuals, especially the gala uh, raised a, a, a good amount of money that will sustain us for the future, but we're always open to uh, uh, future support. So because it is a paid experience as well, which is important. In terms of COVID, uh, of course, here we follow the rules. Uh, Anna and I were sort of dealing with the rules as they related to the Parliament of Canada. Um, you know, staff were sent home as offices closed. Uh, I think people have seen uh, in the past couple of weeks that committees of Parliament are meeting uh, electronically uh, to sort of do um, a lot of business. There's sort of a, there's a smaller question period that takes place now um, but on September 21st, a Parliament's supposed to come back, um, and then they will make some decisions based on that situation, the health situation on September 21st, about the fall. Um, there's lots of things that have to happen, like a budget and other um, regular parliamentary business. So um, I think as the COVID situation improves, uh, there will be you know, more and more uh, physical gatherings, you know, at a safe distance with the with the health rules, etc. But I think Parliament, like everybody else, has also adopted a lot of uh, innovative rules that allow people to participate, you know, MPs to participate from wherever they need to. And um, so we're going to keep our eyes and ears open. Uh, our, we're hoping to have an intern or two uh, start uh, probably mid-fall, not, not right as Parliament comes back, but probably, you know, October, November, uh, is is more realistic once we will have a sense of what the rules are, what the situation is, because we do think, uh, you know, while Anna made a great uh, go of it, sort of working remotely, it is uh, much more valuable to be able to sort of work in person on the Hill, uh, to go to meetings and, and social events, etc. And that, you know, all of that will change, of course, uh, you know, in, and our role here as UCC is, is, is changing the way of how we talk to MPs, how we interact with parliamentary committees as well. Uh, so we will, you know, do our best to follow all the rules and uh, be extra, extra safe. So, but we do encourage applications um, for people who would be available for the fall or even perhaps in the winter, you know, even in January, uh, if that's what it takes sort of after Christmas, uh, we're willing to uh, be flexible with, with folks because we want to offer a good experience. And I think it's important to say we're not looking for just one intern. Uh, we have the possibility of, of, of having a couple of folks. Um, and one of the one question I just wanted to address on is always sort of how do we pick the MPs? And I think we, we really always wait to see the applicants, to see the areas of interest that the applicants have. 
uh, and then we 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 have a good sense of the MPs who are interested in working with interns, and we try to match. We try to match uh, the MP, their office, their staff team here in Ottawa with the, an intern to make sure it's a good fit. Uh, so it's not that we sort of have a predetermined uh, sort of list of MPs or, or saying you know you're going to go here or there. So uh, I know there was one other question about accommodation that came up that I answered in the in the in the text chat. Um, so interns are are responsible for their own accommodations. Uh, we do help uh, people find uh, lodging, whether it's uh, apartments or dorms or sort of roommates, etc. Um, so that hasn't been an issue too much uh, in the past. Um, and um, those are the kind of the two biggest questions that I get. Uh, right off the bat. So over to you, Anna. Okay, thank you, Ihora. Um, so last is for everyone to answer their questions. Uh, this photo is actually very funny to me, but I have a, a wacky sense of humor because it's question period. Anyways, moving on. Uh, so we'll be able to answer your questions. Okay, so there's there's one other question here in the chat. Oh, there's two questions in the chat that I'll just read. So uh, somebody gives us their age and says, am I too old to apply? So the answer is we don't have an age limit. Um, we're looking for recent grads uh, of, of post-secondary. Uh, and we're, you know, it doesn't have to be that you graduated this year, but recent grads uh, within, you know, a year or two or three. So that's kind of our answer on on the age. And the second question is, when will applicants be notified if they are selected for the internship? So uh, our deadline, I think Anna mentioned in her video and in her invitation to this, our deadline is now extended to August 21st. Um, so uh, we need a couple of weeks to review applications and get transcripts and that kind of thing. So I anticipate by mid-September, uh, most likely working with this committee, uh, which includes uh, former interns and Roman and, and Alex and others, that we'll, we'll be able to talk to people in early to mid-September in terms of sort of where things are at and we'll know, you know the rules from Parliament at that point as well. Alex, does that make sense in terms of our timeline, I think? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so if there's any, if there's any more questions, uh, you can type them into the Q&A uh, box and um, there, oh, I've seen, okay, somebody, somebody wrote us another question here in the chat. Now the question is, having graduated this year from my undergrad, would recent, would recent graduates still be eligible? Uh, is the internship to future masters and PhD? So we, we don't have a, there's not a requirement um, in terms of a, a specific kind of degree. So if you've graduated from an, under, from an undergrad or a college uh, or a master's, that's fine. Um, so definitely we would encourage you to apply. Uh, there's another question here. Uh, is it possible or advisable to submit more than three references? <laughs> well, that, that sounds like you have a great, uh, a great CV if you can give us more than three references. Um, you know, you can tag anything you want onto the form. Some people have sent us some of their academic work. Um, oh, it tells me my internet signal is unstable. Can you guys hear me? Okay, uh, so I mean, definitely we, we have an application form uh, and we want people to complete it. Uh, I think it's important to complete it and, and just knowing that if you leave big parts of it blank, you will probably not get a call back. Um, and, uh, but if you have something special that you want to sh you know, share with us, you can email it to us in terms of a, a project you've worked on or extra, um, you know, resort, extra sort of uh, references. So that's, that's fine. Um, okay, I'm gonna turn this question over to Larissa and, and Anna. The question has come up, uh, how important is knowing French? So I would say knowing and understanding French. So uh, Larissa, give us your perspective on French and then uh, we'll go to Anna and then I have another question popped up here. Um, I mean, my experience, I worked for a Toronto MP. Um, so I honestly did not use French very much um, when I was on the Hill, there, like anything official that goes out is bilingual, but there are translation services on the Hill that a lot of offices will use if they, if, especially sort of a lot of the, the more um, Anglo offices. Um, I definitely think that having a knowledge of French is useful. My French is fairly basic. I had to pass like a, a 
uh, sort of standardized comprehension tests when I was in school. Um, but I definitely think the stronger your French, the more of an asset you would be to an office, just because I think a, for a lot of MPs to find bilingual staff is sometimes difficult. Um, but I don't, if you don't speak French, I wouldn't see that as something to dis discourage you from applying. Um, there are also French courses, online French trainings that you can take through a lot of the staff programs. I mean, I work for the Liberals. I don't know what the other parties have, but I assume it's probably something similar. Um, and there were sort of French courses. A lot of the times you can, you can take stuff through that. And there's also a lot of sort of separate French, online French classes, I guess now, that you can take sort of in Ottawa more generally because it's definitely a skill that's, that's in demand. It's something I would recommend. Anna, how was your perspective with the French language? Yeah, I agree with what Larissa was saying. Um, I also have a very basic understanding of French. Um, my MP was also more so from a English speaking writing. So we primarily wouldn't use French. Um, but so if you're worried about that aspect, it's not going to make or break your application. However, if you are bilingual in French, I mean, it does open up doors further past the internship as well. Um, knowing French in Ottawa is seen as an asset. Um, there are some cabinets or ministers that if you'd like to work for afterwards, they do require French. So um, it's not a break or make uh, for this particular internship, but it is something that you may want to consider in the future. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Uh, the other, I guess it's sort of a question comment. This is from somebody who doesn't have, hasn't completed their university education yet. Uh, so, and, and asking if this cancels the application opportunity. Alex, do you want to talk about the value of the post-secondary degree? I guess the issue is completing a degree is probably more important than taking a year off to do this, in my estimation. It, I think it's probably, the, the program was sort of set up for recent graduates for a reason because there's a logistical issue of being in Ottawa. And so that's, that's why it's set up. I don't think it's a, it's a deal breaker or not, but in some ways through my conversations with various people, I always thought that, you know, having people complete their education first and then not take a break on this because life intrudes sometimes and you know going back to school afterwards you know i i i i would encourage people to finish their degrees but it doesn't it doesn't uh eliminate you from from contention i don't think yeah, that's a good, that's a good way of putting it. Okay, I don't see any other questions. So we'll give everybody there's there's uh, some people uh, still on the line with us here. Um, again, uh, we're not looking at Facebook in terms of questions right now. We're just in the zoom. Um, I don't see any other questions or any other comments. Um, uh, I'm just thinking, thinking out loud about the, some of the common questions were asked. So, you know, accommodations is one thing. The length of the internship. I mean, again, we're flexible. Uh, we started off and Larissa sort of did a 10 month, uh, which was sort of a September to June, which is our sort of ideal, you know, full, uh, full parliamentary year. Uh, Anna started with us because uh, there was an election last fall, uh, so parliament didn't come back. And so Anna started in March and went until June. And um, so we're, we're, and uh, Voldemir and Ostap have done sort of shorter stints as well, but had, had great success. So I would say um, we're, we're always open to give people as much uh, up to that 10 months, as much uh, work experience as we can. And, um, you know, so that's why we're, we're still kind of, we don't have a, it doesn't start on October 1st necessarily, but we're hoping to start in the fall uh, based on everybody's availability as well. Um, so that's kind of one of the common questions I get. I think we've answered the question about the sort of how do we match MPs? You know, again, we, we talk to talk to uh, candidates and figure out areas of interest and areas of focus. Um, Anna or Larissa and, or Alex or any other or questions that you sort of get that are common questions? Well, this is actually something from what you just said. Um, if you have ever been involved in politics at any level, put that in because that's probably one of the most important criteria we're looking for is that previous experience because one, it helps us match you up with MPs because we're not going to 
you know, if, if you have one political understanding or perspective, we're not going to try to force you to work for somebody whose perspective you don't like. I mean, we're, we're looking for success stories here. Uh, and the other thing is, is simply because it differentiates you. And, you know, if this is a person, if you're looking for a, you know, a career in this area, you know, that gives us our sort of the UCC the best bang for its buck. Sorry, Lotus, are any, any other common questions you have been asked by other candidates? I think in the past, I've sort of had people ask like what the best approach to it is and sort of how to make the most, I think, out of the program, especially just because it really is, in the, in the grand scheme of things, a very consolidated amount of time. Um, and I guess my answer to that is usually to just take any opportunity that comes up. I think that there's a lot of opportunities that do come out of this job um, and this experience, I think it's kind of harder maybe to gauge that with COVID. I think a lot of events, stuff like that might not work in the same way, but even anything virtual, I say, you know, attend stuff after, after hours, um, go to events. You have a lot of resources available to you, like conferences, talks, um, receptions that are not just very good networking opportunities, but also they really sort of give you a good insight into a lot of the issues that come up on the hill and they really show you how things function. Um, any sort of work that the office suggests you do, like they usually will sort of see what your interests are. They'll ask if you have an interest in doing certain things. And I, I think really the biggest thing to take away from this program is to really just take any, any opportunity that you can get because I really do think it's a very valuable learning experience and a stepping stone and a really great way to sort of start building a career in this if, that, if that's what you want to do, so. Well said. Anna, any other kind of, uh, was, were there any other questions that we had received ahead of time? I don't think so. I can remember. Uh, I have been asked previously, you know, what would a day look like? What does day in, day out look like? Um, that does change every day, which is, in my opinion, a great aspect of the program because it is catered to your interest, um, along with what Larissa said. Um, COVID might shape it, but there oftentimes are networking events after hours. And even with COVID, there are online meetings that you can attend afterwards. And so there might be a day where you're doing committee research, and then the next day, it might be a lot of speech writing. So it, it, it does vary quite a bit, and you get exposed to a, a large diversity of, of jobs within the internship. Well said. Uh, okay, I think we're just about ready to wrap up. So again, uh, thank you to everybody for participating tonight. Um, we have uh, uh, applications are online uh, and Anna and I are available to answer questions if you've thought of something afterwards. It's uh, email, the email address is parliamentaryinternship at ucc.ca or I think it also is internship at ucc.ca for those who wanna save typing space uh, and um, we're updating our website all the time with with information i think we're going to work on some frequently asked questions as well and um, again even if you don't put an application in encourage you know encourage your friends and family we definitely know that this is a, a word of mouth kind of an exercise as well to sort of tell people about it uh, tell people who might not have heard about it about this program and we thank again roman and oksana for uh hosting the gala and uh, helping us really promote it and publicize the program. And uh, now we're, we're just kind of excited about the year ahead uh, to, to get into the new session of Parliament. Okay, Anna, any other final points that we need to make before we close the session? Or are we, I think I don't see any more questions. So I think we're good for questions right now. I also want to thank everyone who's attending and, and listened to our little presentation. Um, it is a chunk of your evening, so so thank you for coming and listening. And like Ihor said, um, if you have a question that's more tailored to your needs, you can definitely send it on over to our email. And any more information is also found on the UCC website. So um, thank you for coming and and please apply, or if you know anybody else in the community, you can pass on over the information as well. Great, okay, dobranich, and uh, everybody have a great night. Bye-bye. Thank you.